Hi everybody! In this video we're going to talk about the tangential and normal components of acceleration. So consider traveling along a curve in space where you have some object that follows this path or curve. Sometimes vectors describing the motion, if we write the vector for the curve in um, the ijk form, it's not necessarily always very meaningful or relevant. So we actually are interested in some other vectors and I'm going to talk about them. So some more relevant vectors might be the unit tangent vector and why this might be relevant if you're thinking about something moving along a curve in space is because it indicates the forward direction, what direction your object is traveling in. Another vector would be the unit normal vector and that's relevant because it indicates the direction in which the path is turning. So it lets you know about the turning of your curve. And then also what's called a unit binormal vector. And this one is telling you about the tendency of the motion to twist out of the plane created by T and N. And this is in the direction perpendicular to this plane. And so this idea, this tendency of twisting, is called torsion. And we'll do a calculation for that in, um, in a little bit. And so this unit normal vector, binormal vector, excuse me, it's um, perpendicular to both T and also N. So that's what this is saying down here. And so it's letting you know about the twisting out of the plane that those two vectors are in, which is called the osculating plane. And we'll write that soon. So here's a calculation for how to find this binormal vector. It's actually the cross product of T and N. Therefore, by definition of our cross product, it is giving you a vector that's perpendicular to both T and N. Here's an alternate formula for it where you can actually use your uh, velocity and acceleration vectors. If you know your position vector function, you can find the velocity and acceleration and then plug them into this formula to find this binormal vector. So we have what's called a T and B frame. And so these three vectors, T, N, and B, are t unit tangent vector, unit normal vector, and unit binormal vector, together define a moving right-handed vector frame. So it's sort of hard to visualize it with this still photo, but basically your curve is this part right here. And these three vectors combined create this um, like frame, this right-handed frame that moves along your curve. Remember, T always points in the direction you're heading, N always points um, in the direction of the turning, and then B is perpendicular to both of those, and it's letting you know about twisting out of the plane that T and N create. So here's another visual for you. So this light blue is your curve that your object is traveling along, and so notice T is letting you know that your object is sort of like traveling up, if you will, up this curve. N is pointing into the way that it's turning, like inward, sort of toward this um, z-axis over here. And then B is perpendicular to both of those, and it's uh, like the twisting out of the plane that those two vectors would be in. So you can kind of think of it like um, maybe the bottom of this box here would be the plane containing N and a T and B is telling you about the tendency of it to twist out of that plane. So the nature of a path and motion along it, we can analyze it by expressing the acceleration vector along the curve as a linear combination of the T and B frame. So let me explain what I mean by that. So here's your acceleration vector A. We know how to find acceleration if we know position or velocity. If we know position, we differentiate twice. If we know velocity, we differentiate once. But we can write our vector A, our acceleration vector, in terms of both the unit tangent vector T and the unit normal vector N. And so it's a linear combination of those two. So some number times T plus some number times N. So we, we've added vectors in the past, and it's just the sum of these vectors where A sub T and A sub N are like scaling um, this unit tangent vector and this unit normal vector. And I'll show you a visual with this. But let's break those down real quick. The tangential scalar component is A sub T. 
and then the normal scalar component is a sub n. And then here's some calculations for them. So a couple of ways to think about it. The um, unit or the tangential component, if your curve is parameterized with arc length, in, that's what s represents, you can just take the second derivative of your um, position. But it's, let's say it's not necessarily parameterized by arc length. You would find your velocity, find that magnitude, and then differentiate that. We'll work out an example in the next video to where I go through um, all of this stuff. Over here, the normal component, notice it's your curvature times this derivative of your arc length with respect to t, this um, derivative squared. Or you can say it's the curvature times this derivative or magnitude of velocity squared. And so why these are important and why these are a little bit more relevant or meaningful is because of what they represent. So the tangential component is actually the rate of change in the speed of your object on your path. And then the normal component is the rate of change in the direction. So this component here lets you know about how your speed is changing. And this component here lets you know about how your direction is changing. So here's a visual for you. So here's our path that our object is on, the blue. And so at any particular point, we have our unit tangent vector, we have our unit normal vector, and then our acceleration vector is the sum of these two, but scalar um, multiples of them. So remember, you can use your parallelogram rule for adding vectors. And so this is just a visual where a sub t makes t a little bit longer than 1. Because remember, t is a unit vector, so its length is 1. So maybe with this visual, a sub t is like uh, 1.2 or something. So notice it's just a little bit longer than the unit vector t, but in this direction of t. And then same thing with a sub n. It's a multiple of n. So it's just like some number times n. And so it's just a, a scaled version of that vector. And when we add those together, we get our acceleration vector right here. And so just a kind of more meaningful way um, to break down acceleration in terms of n, which points in the way that we were turning, and then t, which points in the direction that we're heading on our curve. So our vector a, our acceleration vector, it lies in the plane containing t and n which is called the oscillating plane. So in, in this visual, it's a two-dimensional photo, but um, it's exactly how it looks is A is laying like in the plane or sort of on like the piece of paper that T and N would be lying on as well. So just a couple of things to notice here. From our formula for the normal component of acceleration, if you sort of just look at what these two things are saying, this is curvature times the speed squared. So if you, this is like the turning and this is a speed. And so this would kind of translate as higher speeds on sharper turns mean that this number is going to get bigger. So you're going to have a larger normal acceleration anytime your, um, your speeds are higher and your turns are sharper because curvature is bigger when this, this turns are sharp and speed is higher, of course, when the number is bigger. Something else to notice is that you have a constant speed anytime you're traveling around a circle. And so you wouldn't be necessarily changing your speed uh, because you're constant. And so that component would be zero. So if you're traveling along a circle, this component in front of t would be zero because you're not changing the speed. OK, so here's some alternate formulas for you. So we have our tangential component of acceleration. You can find it also by just doing the dot product of velocity and acceleration, and then dividing by the magnitude of velocity. The normal component of acceleration has two alternate formulas here. One involves um, the cross product, but notice it also still involves velocity and acceleration, just like this formula did. And then this version here is the magnitude of your acceleration vector squared minus this tangential component squared. And then just an alternate formula for curvature as well. So we talked about curvature before. And then if you want, you can actually find curvature this way, where you take this cross product of V and A, find the magnitude, and then the magnitude of V cubed, and then do the division. So we're going to mention torsion here. 
And then in the very next video, I'm going to walk you through an example where I go through all of this stuff that we've been talking about. So torsion is the rate at which the curve moves out of the osculating plane, or you can say the rate at which the osculating plane turns about this unit tangent vector as your point moves along the curve, or it's simply how the curve twists. And so the osculating plane is down here in this picture. It's the plane containing both T and N. And so the torsion is how it, um, your curve twists out of that plane, the twisting motion of it. Just so you know, we have some other names here. Um, the normal plane is the plane containing both N and B. And then the rectifying plane is the plane containing T and B. Um, so the osculating plane is the one that has to do with the torsion and the twisting out of that plane. So here is your formula for torsion. I do have some other versions of it for you. Um, this is Greek tau. So we usually use tau for torsion. And so it's the negative of the derivative of your unit binormal vector with respect to s or arc length dotted with n. Okay, so uh, let me just kind of clarify this. You would find your binormal vector and then you differentiate it as long as it was parameterized by arc length. If it wasn't, we have alternate formulas. So here's another version of the formula. So it's the um, velocity crossed with the acceleration and then dotted, this is the dot product, with the derivative of acceleration. So this part here, this is actually um, considered jerk when you take the derivative of acceleration. That's called jerk. It's the change or rate of change of acceleration. And then divided by this magnitude squared. And then there is a third version here. This one's a little funny looking, but let me explain it. So these dots are just a simplified way to write derivatives. So if your curve is given to you in this format, um, x just represents the component of, for i, y for j, and z for k. This is saying right here that you're taking the first derivative, second derivative, and third derivative with respect to, um, let's say, t is t is your input and in terms of your three components, x, y, and z. Now, all of those derivatives go inside of this determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So you would then have to calculate the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix to use this formula. And all that would be your numerator. And then you would divide by this magnitude um, down here squared. So this is an option for you as well. All of these will give you the torsion value, which the torsion is just your rate um, that your curve is moving out of the osculating plane. So that's going to be it for this one. In the very next video, though, I'm going to walk you through an example where I find all the parts that we need to get to this torsion value at the very end. All right, so see you soon.